Assalamu alaikum everyone. As promised, this is part two of my virtual lecture on topic three, business cycles, unemployment and inflation. Specifically, I will be covering the second half of the unemployment topic. What is full employment? There is this misconception that full employment means everyone's working, but that's not necessarily true. What he means by full employment is that those who are able and willing to work, they are employed, but there are also those who are not employed, and they are usually from the frictional and structural unemployment type. According to Keynes from Keynes in Economics, full employment is said to exist when there is no involuntary unemployment. In other words, full employment means there is no cyclical unemployment. So as I said just now, there are also people who aren't working during full employment. Now, the full employment unemployment rate is known as the natural rate of unemployment. Now, let's put these two elements together. What is full employment again? It's basically when those who are in the labor force, i.e. the employed labor force, plus the natural rate of unemployment. Now, both of these constitute full employment. Now, the natural rate of unemployment is not fixed because it depends on many factors, such as the demographic makeup of the labor force and of the laws and customs of the country. And besides that, um, during full employment, it is implied that there is full utilization of all labor resources. So what it means is the economy is assumed to be able to produce at its potential upper level. Okay, so now let's move on to the effects of unemployment. The first is loss of output, or better known as GDP gap. Now, when there's unemployment happening, we know that many people aren't working. Therefore, we are actually experiencing potential loss of productivity, correct? That is why when high unemployment happens, it is related to loss of real output. Economists call this sacrificed output a GDP gap, which is the amount by which actual GDP falls short of potential GDP. In other words, it is the difference between the actual and potential GDP. As you can see here, if our actual GDP is more than potential GDP, we will have a positive GDP gap, which is a good thing. Okay, but if our actual GDP is much less than the potential GDP that we could have gotten, then we would have a negative GDP gap. There is a way to calculate this GDP gap using the Okun's law. This law basically shows the relationship between unemployment and GDP. According to Okun's law, for every 1% of unemployment that is above the natural rate of unemployment, a negative GDP gap of about 2% occurs. Why don't you try this example? Given that GDP is 630 billion and the natural rate of unemployment is 6%, if unemployment rate is 7.4%, how much real output is lost? We can actually use the Okun's law here to solve this problem. Now, what is given to us? You are given that NRU is 6%. And the unemployment rate is 7.4%. Now, the difference between these two is 1.4%. Remember, what does the Okun law say? The Okun's law said that for every 1% of unemployment above the NRU, a negative GDP gap of 2% occurs. So we can know that the difference between these two is 1.4%. So you just multiply that with 2, so you will get a negative GDP gap of 2.8%. Okay, but the, the question is asking you how much real output is lost. So what you need to do is just take the answer, which is 2.8% uh, of that negative GDP gap. You multiply it with, yes, the figure here that's given to you. So the answer is $17.64 billion of real output is lost. Another effect or cost of unemployment is that they affect people differently. Now, when people become unemployed, not everyone experienced the same burden. This is because people have different education levels. They have different skills levels. They have different level of training. And there's the element of discrimination happening in the workplace. It has been reported that higher unemployment normally happens among teens, among those at the lower end of the occupation scale, among females, among non-whites in the US, among the less educated. And of course, there are also studies showed that unemployment normally happens more to those who are longer being unemployed. 
Okay. Uh, besides that, there are also the non-economic costs of unemployment. Because many people work to make a living. So when people are without a job, what it means is they have no more money to pay their bills. They don't have money to buy their groceries. They have no money to uh, pay for their health care and transportation, for instance. But the negative effect of being unemployed goes beyond financial consequences. Okay, So these non-economic costs of unemployment normally include the mental and emotional stress that these people face when they become unemployed. Now, this uh, non-economic cost normally can have adverse or negative effect on their health. Okay, so I gave you several examples such as um, low self-respect, low morale, loss of skills. All of this will contribute to families being broken up or family disintegration. So when many families or many societies break up because of not being, you know, having jobs, so we will have political unrest. Here I'm sharing with you other effects of unemployment. Um, some of them have been... Um, well mentioned before, so I guess it's repetitive. For instance, loss of capital is related to GDP gap that I explained earlier, which is also related to the loss of income for those who are unemployed. Here, the social problems, you can relate it to the non-economic costs. And obviously, when, people, when many people aren't working, they don't pay tax, so it involves higher government borrowing. And of course, when we have people not working, what it means is there's underutilization or inefficient use of labor resources. Okay, so basically that wraps up this topic. For other points that are available in the lecture notes, uh, feel free to read them yourselves, okay? Okay, so we've come to the end of our virtual lecture. Um, as always, please do read these notes together with your lecture notes and textbook. Okay, especially to those who have no background in economics, you have to read the textbook, okay? Uh, there's no shortcut about it. Um, if you have any questions, you can email me or can you write comments in Google Classroom or uh, you can just ask me in class when I see you. Okay, so that's it. Have a nice day. Assalamualaikum.